Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lane and I'm a nurse practitioner student. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about something that affects all nurses at some point in time, and that is precepting. So whether you're that person who, when the manager tapped you on your shoulder, you cringed when she told you that you have to precept a new nurse, or if you're that person who was amazingly excited and just wanted to figure out what the first thing about precepting really is this video is for you and I'm gonna be talking about things that I've seen that have helped preceptors and just made really amazing preceptors so I'm calling this video seven habits of highly effective preceptors let's get into today's video So preceptors can really either make or break those first months as either a new grad nurse or a new grad nurse practitioner student or even if you're still a student, it can really make or break that entire rotation. Um, because your preceptor is really the one who you look up to. They're your role model for either that semester or for that orientation. You might pick up their habits, good or bad. Um, you pick up their attitudes. Are they kind of pessimistic? Are they burnt out? Or are they positive? Are they encouraging you? And they also can even make sure that you don't make any fatal errors. Are they watching you if you're pushing a medication for the first time that you're not sure of? Are they really looking over that prescription that you're writing and that they're signing if you're a nurse practitioner student? Um, are, they, are, are they really with you through this journey? Um, and that can make you feel supported and make you feel confident as you're starting to get out there or it can lead to more anxiety for orientation and when you're for finally starting to get out there on your own. So I really wanted to talk about preceptors and just talk about some things that I think would make you a more effective preceptor and things that can help those who are new. So the first habit that's really important for preceptors is to be knowledgeable. And I mean, that sounds pretty basic, right? But <laughs> you mean, it is important. You do want to actually have a basis of either knowing like key policies if you're inpatient um, or if you're an NP, you want to know basic guidelines, like basic up to date guidelines. So and even if you don't know everything, which none of us do, <laughs> you should be able to point the student or the new grad to the resources that you use when you don't know the answer. So inpatient, that might be pointing the, the student or new grad to maybe an online database that has your policies. Or for a nurse practitioner, that might be pointing the student to whatever guidelines that you use through whatever association is like kind of your go-to. Or maybe some apps that you use when you're looking up a medication. So it's not that you know everything, but it's that you know how to help the student get whatever information they will need in the future. Because obviously, they, I mean, there's so many different clinical scenarios and you're not always gonna be there. So it's setting them up for success in the present, in orientation, and also in the future when they're off on their own. So with being knowledgeable, I think it's also important that preceptors try to get to know the individual student or individual preceptee because everyone learns differently. Some people like to have policies printed, highlighted, like they like to have a little binder, a little notebook, and they're very visual. Other people are like, yeah, I'll just watch you do it once and then I'll do it if you could just watch me and then I'm good. Other people, it's kind of like they need to hear it a bunch of times and they need you to repeat the steps and repeat all of the policies and things a few times. And none of those ways are wrong. Everyone learns differently, but it's up to the preceptor to kind of make that effort to really get to know their preceptee and know which way they're gonna learn best. In the NP world, I've noticed some preceptors tend to do more case studies or they tell the preceptee to look up the information first so that they're trying to get them to learn on their own. And I just think it really varies depending on the person. So it would even be worth like a five minute five minute conversation when you first meet your preceptee to be like, hey, um, what have you felt like you've learned best in your clinicals and how can I assist you with that in this clinical? Because I know that the way I do things might not be the best way for you to actually learn. And that leads me into my next habit, which is being strategic. Because you don't want to waste the time that 
you have with the student on orientation or that rotation. It's very limited, so you really want to make them the best that they can be in that amount of time. But you want to set realistic goals. So in the inpatient world, I found that it's really helpful to set goals at the beginning of the shift and the beginning of the week and even the beginning of the month if you're with that person for the whole time. So even if it's just two goals of like this month, I want to be able to go from taking one patient to four patients this week. I want to go from maybe not ever having done a blood draw to have been, having done, I don't know, six blood draws or for this shift. I want to improve my time management skills by being able to do my assessment with this patient within 30 minutes or what, what, whatever it might be based on your unit needs and unit culture and what that student feels like they could realistically do for that shift. Um, and I think it's important at the end of the shift to review or the end of month, end of the week, whatever you decide, I think it's important to kind of review those goals with the student or with the new grad because one it might make them feel good if they're feeling kind of discouraged so you can say like see you actually have been hitting your goals and you've been very consistent or um if they have been kind of lagging in certain things you can make a game plan for next time to be like okay i know we've been saying that we want you to be able to place this fully um but we we keep brushing it off so next time like we're gonna try really aggressively to try to get you to practice that skill um, so I just found that that's been very helpful and it also makes you feel good as a preceptor when you see that your preceptee has been doing amazing and they've been actually growing and you can see that and they will and they will. So I think another habit that really sets certain preceptors above the rest is a preceptor who will really try to integrate you into the culture of the unit or the practice of wherever you are. So this is someone who's very kind and social, will introduce you to everybody, will kind of tell you, hey, maybe avoid this with this person or this person likes things to be a certain way. So when you're giving a report, make sure you tell them that. I think that that just goes above and beyond to really make that preceptee feel involved and welcome and that really combats a lot of that like nurses eat their young feel <laughs> if you're really integrating them and i think that this also goes for if you're an np student like i've i found it's really helpful when i have a preceptor who introduces me to the secretary to other providers um and i feel like i can kind of talk to those providers as well and they give me an insight into you know, what is it like to work at this entity? Um, is this a type of unit that I would like to work on in the future? Because I think culture is so, so important in nursing. If you feel like you have coworkers who have your back, I found that you can get through more hard shifts if you actually genuinely like your coworkers. Because I've been on some rough units, but the people made the difference. Because you'd be surprised what you can withstand when you have a sucky shift but you're laughing with coworkers who just get you and who are there for you and support you. So as a preceptor, you wanna make sure that you're starting to introduce your preceptee to all of those things um, so that they feel welcome, that they're more likely to stay and have a positive first um, opinion of their new career. So the next habit is something that I always struggle with, but I think that it does make someone a really good preceptor. And that is knowing when to give space when the time comes. Um, because I'm a preceptor who's like, oh, like this is my baby bird. Like I don't want to leave them and send them off on their own. But there does come a time in the orientation or precepting process where you kind of have to step back as a preceptor and say, okay, I am. I am here if you need me, but I'm not going to be like with you all the time because you want that precept D to start kind of learning how to ride the bike on their own, you know, like you want them to start get building that clinical confidence and they're not really going to build that if you're always there with them to catch every single thing. But at the same time, you want to be close enough that if they have questions, they should come out and talk to you. So you're giving them space, but you're also not jeopardizing patient care. You're letting them know that, hey, I'm gonna be maybe right out in the hall or I'm gonna be you know, at the nurse's station if you need me, but I'm literally right here. I just wanna give you space to be able to think things through for yourself. And of 
course, this has to do with the timeline that the preceptee is on in their either student education journey or as they're getting towards the end of orientation. So this isn't something that you do, you know, the first week if this is like a new grad, um, at least not for um, a bedside nurse. But, you know, it's, it's something that you use your clinical judgment on. But all that to say, don't be scared when that time comes because that is important too because if you really stay like so, too close to them towards the end when they get off orientation it's probably going to end up being more stressful for them because they're not going to they're not they're, they're going to be so overwhelmed not having someone there with them all the time and the truth is like at least for the inpatient world when you're out there you do need to have some some muscles grown by the time you get off orientation because you know everyone's going to be busy when you when you're on your own so you you are doing your preceptee a service by being able to step back when the time comes another very important habit is empathy we all know that the nursing profession is a very stressful one and most of us when we started out as new grads it was a stressful experience i'll say for myself like i my anxiety was high I was like so unsure of myself, so scared to make a mistake. And it's important as preceptors to remember that that's where that person might be. And so I think it's important to remember to encourage your preceptee. I know that's like, <laughs> I think sometimes we, we forget about that because it's like, okay, tough love. You know, you, you need to figure this out. You need to be in this profession. Um, and if you're going to be in it, you need some thick skin. But... Okay, just remember that that person is probably going through a lot and it really helps to just be empathetic. Get in touch with remembering how you felt when you first started and try to be there for them. Try to be emotional support. Um, at the end of the shift, maybe have a debrief if that's what they need. Um, and I'm not saying that like you spend an hour a day just talking through your emotions with that person um, because there comes a point where you are also teaching them how to compartmentalize to a degree because when things happen we're not always able to respond in the way that we would like in the moment for the benefit of the patient so that is something that you're also teaching as well but when the time comes and that person especially at the end of the shift and they're, they're feeling unsure of themselves it's I think it's important to make sure that we're nurturing our preceptees as well because um, I've had I've had definitely had preceptees where they're really going through it at the end of the shift like they're they had a really hard shift and they're they're feeling like oh my goodness like I can't do this um, especially when you kind of start taking a step back and start letting them kind of fly um, there's a lot of you know there can be a lot of insecurity there so I think it's also important to make time to have a second with them at the end of the day be like you know how are you feeling how are you taking care of yourself um, are you remembering to take care of yourself throughout the shift and remembering that you know I've always heard it said you are the fifth patient so we, we had four patients on our unit and we like I, I was precepted and I was told remember you were the fifth patient you need to take care of yourself in the shift because burnout is real as we all know um, so as preceptors we have to make sure that our preceptees are taking care of themselves emotionally as well and that we're nurturing that and lastly you want to keep that mentorship going I mean after you've already kind of integrated them and you've kind of been that resource to them I think it's really amazing to just even when you're not assigned to that person anymore as a preceptor or if they're off orientation or they're off that rotation um, just offer to say hey if you ever need anything you can email me you can call me you can text me um, or if you're with another preceptor you know feel free if they're busy you can always just ask me a question or when you're out there on your own you can always hit me up I think that's really underrated and not everybody talks about that because even once you've had an amazing orientation you're still gonna be like asking a lot of questions and needing a lot of help for probably months after that so it's nice to keep that mentorship and that relationship going and you feel like okay wow I really have someone I can go to and I know for me as a bedside nurse you know having that preceptor relationship of like okay like I kind of have like a unit sister like who I can go to um, when I got orientation um, it was really a, a nice feeling in the midst of kind of feeling anxious about actually getting out there so I think mentorship is a great way to just keep that bond and though it's nice to have someone that you feel like hey like 
if I'm ever unsure about myself, I, I know this person, I trust them, and I can go to them for advice. So um, I think that's something that can really also help to decrease burnout if you feel like you have someone that you can go to and that you're not on a si in a silo by yourself. Alrighty guys, so thanks for watching this video. Those are all of my seven habits of highly effective preceptors and I hope that you guys like this video. Please feel free to comment below what you think makes a great preceptor. What are some things that you've seen from preceptors in the past that really made it a great experience? I would love to hear what you guys have to share and I will see you in the next video. Peace.